Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. We ended last episode on a bit of a cliffhanger, I'll say. We just found the contradiction in Ron's second testimony. Yeah. Where and Phoenix Wright won't stop slapping the paper. <laughs> He's like, attention everyone. Listen how this paper sounds when I hit it. It's like... <laughs> it's, it's a really catchy sound. So basically, for those who don't remember, like Marty Me. perhaps... Um, Basically, Ron's like, yeah, it took him, like, ten minutes to hide the safe, and we know that the buzzer went oh, off. Oh, yeah, the buzzer went off, yeah. So, okay. like, there's no way he would have done that. So, caught up to speed, let's continue. Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? And what might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's office to security. If the button in the office is pressed, a security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once, at 1.02 a.m., Wh what If Mr. Ron Delight truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Objection! He wouldn't have known that. Ha! Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there were security personnel in the building. He used to work there! <laughs> Up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. Oh yeah, well I think it's stupid. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend, and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity, was not something Mr. Delight could have known. Objection. How do you know that? Ha! Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer was going off. What? This buzzer is extremely loud. There is no way he could have ignored something like that. Yeah. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? Uh. Oh, Fine. I thought he was gonna spit it at us. <laughs> Let's hear your theory. Cool. Remember the defendant's testimony? The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out, and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Yeah, someone would have punched it, so it looks like he did it. Okay. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious... It can only mean that there was another person in that room. That's right, whoever it was knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Question, is my tongue red? Yes, very. Yeah. You just had like a Slurpee Freezy or something. Freezy Slurpee thing. Freezy the Polar Bear's special Slurpee surprise exactly. or whatever. It was like a Skittles whatever Slurpee from uh, Taco Bell. So I'm Taco Bell has sugar. Skittles Slurpees? Yeah, it's really good <laughs> We actually. get the Epic Pursuit music playing while we're talking about this. Skittles Slurpees! <laughs> <laughs> Order in the court! Mr. Wright, this, this is... Th this is preposterous. If th it was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Bullard. I just realized, if you bang your fist on your, like, desk podium thing so much, like, would you have, like, a fracture eventually? In your hand? In your hand. It depends on how hard you're smashing He's it. He's smashing pretty hard. <laughs> See, like, as soon as I'm done with this, I have to go to, like, the chiropractor or whatever. And then the spa. No, what's, what was the commercial that we kept getting at? <laughs> where it's like the Duncan chiropractic can, like, Don't heal mention you. the local ads okay, or else fine. people will be able to find out where fine. we live. Just put the... Lemmings, whatever, like that. Whatever it's gonna thing. be like a solid man to have. Yippee, 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 yippee. <laughs> yeah, future Artie, cut this part out. Then who pressed the buzzer? Uh, it was the victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away. He must have held on long enough to push that button. It was a ah! blunt blow to the head. Hmm. So Kane Bullard sounded the buzzer himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? No, he had a sudden blunt trauma to the head. 
I need to prove that the real criminal was at the scene. But how? Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Bullard who sounded yeah, the buzzer? Yeah, we can totally prove it. How? Because I just said he was instantly, like, it was one of those, like, the stupid, um... Yeah, blunt trauma to the head. So if you die from that, you just die. So he couldn't have been hit and he, then it didn't hit the say buzzer. He, it doesn't say he died instantly. But in all of our previous times where someone's been hit in the head with an object, they die instantly, pretty much. Mia didn't. Mia didn't, because Mia's amazing. And she <laughs> was like... Maybe Reggie's amazing, too? <sighs> he made Reggie, all those Nintendo maybe games. Maybe Reggie is amazing. <laughs> localized all those Nintendo games. Localized all those Nintendo games. <laughs> Well, Advertised that's not gonna, <laughs> That's not going to do it, though, because oh. it doesn't say it was instantaneous. Well, I mean, if we say we're not ready, then it'll just be like, all right, all right. guilty, so prove it. <laughs> the defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. This piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. Cool. Um, let's find it. So it'll probably be on the second or third page. Yeah. Let's take a look at the... Is there a list of the keycard evidence thing that we had? Oh, uh, we don't have the list, no. That's a shame, because if we had the keycard list, we could figure it out. Um, mm, what about Kane's list? This is just the list of prices Oh, for never mind, stuff. never mind. Okay. Um, buzzer record, it was only once. Buzzer went off once at 1.02 a.m. on October the 12th in the CEO's office. Okay. Next. Ron's testimony from Damascus Second Heist on, he was stealing right. as directed by blackmail letters. Sacred yeah, urn, that's not it. the paint that's marks, the urn box. Well, I can't find... The buzzer itself, connected to the basement security guard office, there are no fingerprints on it. Oh. That could be it, then. Could be. If there's no fingerprints. Otherwise, it's not going to be anything with the warehouse room. Anything. So it's going to be the second page of evidence. What about the newspaper clipping? What is that again? Oh, no. This one. Okay, let's just do the buzzer itself. It is the buzzer, okay, actually. Okay, that's Check it out! Mass Damask is famous! Well, what do you think, Mr. Godot? Ha! I can hear it. The sound of a buzzer. Huh? It's going off inside your head at this very moment. The emergency buzzer of your heart. Is it really? Maybe just a little. Mr. Wright, you need to think more carefully. I'm... <laughs> Ooh. Guess there goes your chance to become an ace detective. Come, listen more carefully. Maybe the truth will be elegantly revealed. Creepy, you sound like Detective Atme. <laughs> Defense's opinion is this, of course. I can prove it. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. The defense admits there is no evidence to the contrary. It is possible that the victim himself sounded the buzzer. Ha. Possible? More like definite, Mr. Trite. Which means only two people were there at the crime scene after all. The victim, Kane Bullard, and his killer, Mr. Delight. Come on, Nick! If you can't prove that the real killer was there, this trial is as good as finished! Maya penalized us! <laughs> Arg, I need to get- I guess I need to show some sort of evidence after all. <laughs> the defense is Did I make a second save state? He'll go back. Or did I just do it here? Just, just do it Alright, that's fine. Don't go all the way back to, um, <laughs> like... Yeah, that's fine. Adrian all right. Andrews. I keep wanting to say Julie Andrews. Okay. Julie Andrews. Julie Adrian Andrews. I believe this is the piece of incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. The, the emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullard had really pressed it himself, naturally he would have left his fingerprints behind. Nice. Okay, now that I've come, <laughs> calm myself down. Ron Delight obviously wiped them off. You wipe off fingerprints that quickly? Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that button! I know he did. What was there? The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Mask to Mask. And Mask to Mask always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have had to wipe the button free of fingerprints? Order! 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 Ha. 
it would seem. I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend number crow flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was there at the scene, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? Someone's trying to blame them. <laughs> What's with the awkward silence all of a sudden? <laughs> ha! It looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. No! They're on to you, Nick! D just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. It's obvious. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at around 1 a.m. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? They knocked him out, and then the, the killer... The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. ...to try and blame Master Mask. Mm -hmm. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed. Security was supposed to respond. Hmm. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Ho oh, ho. You've got some guts. I like that in an opponent. Yeah. Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? They didn't mean to, to call the security guard to find out what it did. <laughs> to, 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 this is obvious. To call the security guard. Yeah. In all probability, the killer didn't mean to press it. What do you mean? It's possible that they simply pressed it by accident. It could have been with their back during the scuffle, for example. Aha! That must be why there weren't any fingerprints. Objection. He's like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Is there a functioning brain underneath all that ridiculous hair, Mr. Trite? Huh? The accused testified that he was hit as soon as he entered the room. In other words, as far away from the buzzer as he could possibly be it at was that right time. right by the door? Ack! No, it was literally as far away from the door as possible. The buzzer? <laughs> it would seem you've been taken for a ride, Mr. Wright. Yeah, no, yeah. Door's here, buzzer's there. Door is here, buzzer is like over here, CEO's desk is here, safe is over there. Okay, I literally thought if there was a screenshot, from our perspective, safe, desk, buzzer, door. No, that's the door that leads to like the- Closet? That leads to the files. Okay. Because we saw like all the security okay. files over there. Ah, one more time, I've got to calm down and think quick. I guess that would make sense, you wouldn't have the buzzer by the door. Right. Otherwise, Otherwise like, you open the door and, and like, do it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> In all probability, the killer didn't know what the button was for. What do you mean? The killer probably thought, I wonder what this does, and pressed it to find out. Oh, that's exactly how I make a lot of my mistakes, too. Objection. Like killing people. Ha. Is there a functioning brain underneath all that ridiculous hair, Mr. Trite? Huh? You said that like five seconds ago. <laughs> The panel around the button is labeled quite clearly. It says, emergency buzzer. Oh! <laughs> Let me guess. Maybe next you'll want to claim this mysterious killer is illiterate. Ah, one more time. Gotta calm down, think again. Think again. The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. D do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes. Although, as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Ha. What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in? No. No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. Oh yeah, you're right. I was thinking the door was the security. Yeah. The, yep. The victim, Kane Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer. Who definitely looks like Detective Adney <laughs> with the silhouette. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, in this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Ron Delight. And if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think I was the murderer! Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, I just need to make this epic. <laughs> I, I love that. Order, order, order! Huh. It would seem... 
I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. But Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Uh, wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only Master Mess. So... Nick, you mean the real killer is... We're going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB Security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. I still think it's Detective that but otherwise... Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Ron Delight for the murder of Kane uh, Bullard? That guy. Yeah, Reggie. <laughs> it was me! <laughs> <laughs> just, just do that now. <laughs> hey, hang on, Nick! Are you saying that this is the person who tried to frame Mr. Delight for the murder? Well, yeah. Who else could it be? <laughs> Did they even know that Mr. Delight was Master Master? Hmm, I wonder. Mr. Wright, need I warn you that what will happen if you present irrelevant evidence? Looks like I better think this through again. Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. So I think it's at me. You think it's at me? Oh, yeah. I think it's at me. But is it just because the silhouette looks like Yeah, <laughs> that and also, um, I don't know who else it would be. Because, like, Kane Bullard wouldn't have framed him for the murder of himself. His <laughs> wife didn't know his identity. Or she did. I mean, it's kind of hard not to notice all the mask to mask stuff. It also, is. the blackmail letter was in her house. Yeah, that's true. Naturally, the true culprit was none other than Ron Delight's wife, really? Desiree. Wh what? Why, that's simply... M Mr. Wright, have you gone insane? Objection. Aren't you forgetting something, Mr. Trite? Excuse me? Where was Desiree Delight at 1 a.m. that night? Ah, uh, that, that's right. She was at the police station for almost the entire night. That doesn't mean anything. She was being questioned after being stopped for reckless riding. I have the record of it here. Ah! I forgot all about that! Yeah, that's what I was like. <laughs> it seems that senility may be getting setting in early for you, Mr. Wright. I like how they have special dialogue for that, though. Mm -hmm. Talk about things you never want to hear this judge say to you. <laughs> it looks like you'd better think again. Hmm. Now then, let's hear your opinion, Mr. Wright. <laughs> your opinion? You mean your accusation? Your opinion. <laughs> Here's my opinion. It was him. Yeah, absolutely. Don't make the silhouette of the dude <laughs> who's very obviously that. Detective Luke at me. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective. Luke at me? You mean Mask to Mask did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not Mask to Mask at all. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, explain yourself! You are the one who told the court yesterday he was masked to mask. Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. When Luke Atme confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, a famous detective was unmasked as, well, as Masked to Mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Masked to Mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lord B. Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as Mask to Mask was Luke Atme's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty That's verdict? That's actually what I thought. As an alibi? That's actually what I thought would happen. Because I, I, he confessed and I was like, this seems too easy. Well, yeah, it was also only one trial period. Yeah. You know, it's almost time. Time for... For what? For Luke Atme's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial, after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one... We need to do it now. Do it. Of course. That's assuming you have proof that the detective was the one who committed the murder. 
Mr. Mugatni's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. That was a bit <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I, that seems unlikely. Mommy, did you hear about this trial? What? Benny, how did you know about this? I heard it on the news! <laughs> <laughs> like, we... every child in the, in the entire country of Japanifornia is like, whoa. Mask to mask! <laughs> if we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of this true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Am I really sure about this? Yeah. Ha! A bet's only good when your life's the ante. Mr. Wright, I... I believe in you! Yeah. Mr. Delight. So, so, please, I'm begging you! I mean, we know this is great. Thanks. It's but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? Phoenix. Mia's ghost. What was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take that path of trust. That voice. It sounds like... M Mia! Meanwhile... Your <laughs> Honor, the defense requested everyone an immediate who, recess. Everyone who played this game, like, in first, they're like, what is this crap? Ha. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So that's your answer, huh? Very well. I've decided as well. This court will now take a 20-minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Luke at me to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I thought he was gonna have Maya channel him <laughs> so he could confess. No. He's Never not mind. Dead. He's not dead. No, who <laughs> was I gonna have Maya channel? Maybe Kane Bard? Have... Yeah, like something like that. No. October 14th, 1158 AM, District Court, courtroom number five. Oh boy. <laughs> well, Sir Detective at me. <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne. You performed splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective Atme! You are the one who- Who's the other- That's enough! Whoa! This court a... sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This court finds the defendant, Luke Atme- Wait! Don't hand down your verdict yet, please! Well, well, Sir Lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. Who's this hoser, eh? My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law, and I wish to file an accusation against this man, Luke Atme. A accusation? You accuse Mask to Mask? That man is not Mask to Mask. He's just a ruthless murderer. Wha what? <laughs> Everyone's just. What's with this weirdo? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't do a Canadian accent, That's people. Fine. So. Me either. No, I'm just like. <laughs> it looks so strange. Somebody was like, that guy's like Arnold Schwarzenegger as a judge. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Alright, so that's all the time we have for today. It's a bit shorter than usual. That's fine. But it would have been like an hour episode if we hadn't broken off last time where we mm -hmm. did. So thanks for watching. Tune in next time. We're bringing At Me to the stand. Also, oh, I want to point out. So you were like, that's so wet. Looks exactly like At Me. I think this must be an emulator issue because when you play on the DS, like, it is his silhouette, but it also, like, twists. So you can't really tell. Oh. But in, but on the emulator, I noticed, I'm like, it's not twisting at all. It's literally just his silhouette. I'm like, well, that's... <laughs> I'm like, well I guess it's him. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of weird. Anyhow, that was funny. look forward to next time, everybody. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.